Well, welcome to the Parkview Life podcast. It is our purpose through this podcast to update, inform, equip, and encourage you. Uh, here at Parkview, our mission is to see the glory of Christ among the nations. So our effort is to disciple generations. Uh, today, I'm privileged to have Don Mays, who is our Parkview Baptist School superintendent with me. Uh, we're going to talk all things Parkview School and uh, how that relates to the life of the church. So Don, welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. It's good to be here. I'm glad we're able to have this medium to share with others about what we're doing here on this campus. As you know, being new on our campus, it's a hive of activity yeah. all day long. Absolutely. Well, it's been a, a, a pleasure to see it um, and just to, uh, to get a sense during the day of everything that's happening and what that looks like. Uh, and I know it's a, it's a challenge sometimes to keep it all going, but uh, I know that I've seen just the, the incredible way that all of the, the staff and teachers um, just work to accomplish that. And so, uh, and you're certainly a huge part of all of that. So it's amazing to me to see what happens in a day. So you're at the time that we're doing this podcast right now, you'll probably hear noise in the background. We have a, our pickup time carpool is always the most fun part of any school day. And so uh, you'll get a little example of a lot of feet going back and forth and loudspeakers going off and we're clearing out the campus. Yeah. Another, another successful day in the books. That's good stuff. Well, and we'll get there, right? So uh, we just pray that we'll get there. So um, well, we, uh, we always start with a little rundown on the things that are happening. And so uh, thankfully, we can announce that there are a few other things starting. Uh, so uh, as far as uh, in the life of the church, Comeback Sunday is September 20th. And so we're going to be resuming uh, Sunday school or our Sunday morning Bible studies. Uh, and so that's an exciting thing to be able to bring back, uh, I guess, a normal aspect of, of church life and um, to be able to see that. Uh, coming back, I think, just opens the door and kind of clears the way for other things to start happening as well. Um, I guess this is a great opportunity, too. Are there any things happening in the life of the school over the next couple of weeks that uh, you would want us to know about or want our congregation to be aware of? Right. It has been crazy. Now, our philosophy has always been at the beginning to start full speed ahead as much as we can uh, in a prudent manner. And so we're able to start academics and a lot of the things that we do in our classroom, but the next thing on everybody's agenda is athletics. You've been hearing about it on the college scene. Actually, I've seen some college games on TV lately. It's yep. been a pretty cool thing. So we had a meeting at the Capitol not long ago, and they had talked about LHSAA moving forward with our October 8th and 9th schedule to start high school athletics in Louisiana. So I was talking to our football coach today, and it they, just like you as a pastor, you know, you've been putting a tailspin over, not a tailspin, but more what's happening this week. You make plans. It changes the next week every time the government uh, governor announces something. So I, I think somebody uh, described it as like playing whack-a-mole. Um, it you is. Just don't know what's going to pop up next. And, you know, it that is. Kind of stuff, so. so that kind of got them going. So now we're trying to plan a scrimmage before that, um, like right during that October. So there's some things we have to put into place, but I think it's coming and, and we're going to have athletics pretty soon. Yeah. Well, that's good. And I know a lot of people are excited about that and, uh, Hey, the, the pros will start, you know, I think they started this past weekend. And so, um, you know, look forward to seeing uh, what's going to happen with the athletics here at Parkview. So, well, Don, as we kind of transition into just some discussion about the school, mm -hmm. um, wanted to kind of give you an opportunity to talk about the things happening there. Uh, but first, I mean, a lot of people might not know this, um, but you, you didn't, I guess, I guess your original plan was not necessarily mm -hmm. to be a school superintendent, right? Right. Uh, so tell us how you got involved in that and, uh, kind of what led you into it. Right. It's a very non-traditional story, but I was in West Virginia and I, I, of course I went to school at Parkview. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit. Went to Louisiana Tech, then went to Marshall University Followed a girl up there. Mm -hmm. That's uh, every good reason to go to a school and choose <laughs> your your university. So right. I ended up with a business degree, business management degree. And so I was just in in business, had uh, owned a business, was working in a medical group as an as administrator, mm -hmm. and became a bivocational pastor. Yeah. And so then ended up going to seminary and then moving down to Florida and going to First Baptist Church of Indian Rock. So just a big, big church down there. Uh, eventually came on staff as one of their pastors. Right. And this church had a school, Indian Rocks Christian School. 
still exist to this day. Yeah. And an opening came up for someone to head that school. And I went through an interview process, and there's probably a bigger story behind it than that, but yeah. went straight into that position because I, I think they wanted someone that had the heart of a minister. I had education things in my background mm -hmm. as well, but um, just saw it as, an, first of all, an awesome ministry opportunity and took it, and the rest is history 19 years later. Yeah. So what are the specific things, like with the ministry opportunity that being a school superintendent provides you, and I certainly agree, the pastoral heart in that is is huge. But what are some specifics as far as the openings for ministry that you see that maybe you didn't have as a pastor? Well, you know as a pastor, you want to change lives. You want to make an impact for ministry. And you know how hard that is through a church. You'll Even with like some, how, how some Baptist churches had a Wednesday night Sunday morning, Sunday night, you know, then every event in between, but you still feel like you just, you can't do enough. You can't have enough connections with people. You can't have enough small group connections. And one of the things that I loved about watching a school operate is it, it they are open 24 seven almost. Yeah. And uh, such a huge segment of the community is coming to you for a service, the service of education but it affords so many ministry opportunities. So for me, and again, having a business background, just kind of more of an entrepreneurial spirit and also being in ministry, I saw it as a, a huge opportunity to be able to reach families and to reach students. So it gives you that daily opportunity to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome, man. I, and I think, yeah, you know, as pastors, we, we often get those, I guess, carved out times of, of the week, you know, that we, we get to interact with people. But you're here five days a week, you know, even with extracurriculars. You're just such a great opportunity to impact someone's life. Um, well, and so much of that is, as you know, is about relationships. I think that's such a, a deep way to reach somebody once you get to know them. And a school... You might look at it and it seems so busy and, and so many things going on, but every opportunity that you have to interact with someone, you're building a relationship. And that's why I love just the whole aspect even of athletics and extracurriculars, fine arts. Anytime you can get a small group of people together and have the right staff members that are hired to be a good influence and support that home and, and sure. school and church relationship, uh, it, it's, it's powerful. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So tell us what it was like, because as you alluded to a little earlier, uh, you're Parkview class of 88, right? Mm -hmm. So you came uh, back to the school you graduated from uh, to serve and work here. So what was that transition like? What, what, what were your thoughts when Parkview called? Right. right. It, it was interesting because that is something that it wasn't on my radar screen to be a school administrator, but I can tell you I absolutely love it because you use your entrepreneurial spirit, mm. uh, managerial skills, people skills. Uh, also, I've always loved education and, and just learning anything you can in that whole process. So uh, coming, you know, diving into that situation and then having an opportunity to come to Parkview was, uh, it was exciting. I didn't know what to expect totally, but I've always loved Louisiana and, um, I, 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 well, one of the things that was, that was a big deal is my wife wanted to come back yeah. too. So let's throw that in there <laughs> yeah. as well. She was super excited to come back right. and just to walk on this campus again, I probably took about 300 pictures of every aspect of the campus and said, okay, here we go. It's time for another chapter and, and to be back. I can tell you one thing. I don't want to dominate the conversation. No, you're here, great. But, you're great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Two people in ministry, we, we none of us hear, are ever going to be quiet. We want to hear from you, so I mean, that's <laughs> um, why you're here. Oh, see, you're so diplomatic. Um, is uh, the first time I went to a chapel or a school assembly, it was really emotional for me to be standing in the same worship center where I was in chapel as a student, paying attention, I might add, you soaking yeah. up every word, right? Um, <laughs> and and to be here as a staff member. It was it was very emotional in a good way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I know I can say that we're we're excited that you're here and are thankful for the things you've done. Which, in the now in the time that you've been here, there've been a, a mm -hmm. lot of changes made. Talk to us a little bit about this most recent one. How excited are you about the uh, renovation that we've just completed? 
And then maybe tell us a little bit of uh, what the future holds with the purchase of the laser tag building and those things. Yes, I'll tell you, it has been a fast ride from day one. Uh, first of all, there's always so much to do at a school and always so many things to do in a church. So just in a normal, whatever that is, situation, it's pretty fast paced. But the work that we wanted to do, because you're passionate. If, if you're passionate about something, you see everything that you want to do, everything that needs to be done. And so you start in with those plans. And of course, you're not a one man show around here. So it's just building strong leadership on committees. The church and school had both already started a process of just strengthening the infrastructure of committee structures and how we operate, how we relate to one another, which is a whole nother story that uh, I would hope that other schools and churches would have that kind of relationship. So that foundation was built. And then it was just a matter of doing a master plan and dreaming and having a strategy to strengthen ministry, strengthen partnerships, and strengthen the physical plant, which brings us to, that was one of the reasons I took all those pictures when I came here, just to see what everything looked like and, and start to document things. So this campus has transformed. I've been here eight years, which is hard to believe, but we've had such strong support from everybody. It's, it's improved in major ways. And the biggest one, like you said, is our cafeteria. So this has been our first week, I think, of having students in our cafeteria. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get to phase three and have more students at one time in the cafeteria. Yep. And but maybe it's even as we're saying this, we're not in phase three yet. Maybe by the time this releases, we'll be in phase three. <laughs> we're waiting so, yeah. for any moment to yeah, be able to right. do that. But to be to see students go through there, sometimes, I mean, we may serve 500 students at a time. Yeah. And to have them go through double lines, come into a clean, nice, modern facility is important. Uh, we had basically the same cafeteria that I had back in 1988, and uh, our architects said they could not believe our cafeteria staff was able to prepare, what, 1,200 meals, sometimes 1,400 meals in a day yeah. back there. So uh, there's a lot of neat, neat stories behind it, but I praise God for people stepping up and being uh, faithful yeah. and giving toward this Our Blessings campaign. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So... We've been talking about discipleship. Um, mm -hmm. Both of our podcast episodes that preceded this one have been about that, um, about what it looks like for the church to be involved in that and kind of how it looks for uh, us as individuals and believers to, to share that. So a Christian school connected to a church whose effort is discipleship is not, I guess, a normal thing in our world. It's not, I guess, the typical education experience of mm -hmm. most people. Um, so talk to us about what PBS's overall mission is, and then maybe a little bit about how that complements what the church is seeking to do, and, um, and then maybe we can just talk a little bit more about right. some of the things that right. come from that. Right. You say it's not too common, and that, that astounds me because that's the thing that caught my attention as a young minister is looking at a school ministry and thinking, I cannot believe all these people are coming to our campus. Are you kidding me? We try every way possible for this to happen in, in church life. So yeah. uh, our mission, in a nutshell, at Parkview encompasses two verses. Seek first the kingdom of God. So we want to do all things Christian. Uh, nobody's perfect, but that is the, the cornerstone of what we do. Sure. And then we uh, use the verse out of Luke where Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. So we have that hits all the parts of development, you know, body, mind, and spirit here on our campus. So we have a very specific um, discipleship mindset here. First of all, to lead a student to Jesus Christ, we're, we're what you call an open campus. We're not a covenant school. So a covenant right. school would be um, the student is a believer or the parents are already believers. And so they're coming more maybe for that discipleship aspect. Right. But we're an open campus, so we're very evangelistic. So we believe in sharing the gospel. And once you have someone who has accepted the gospel of Christ, that we find ways for them to grow. And this goes hand in hand. This is the thing that that motivates me. It's not what I work on every day. We've just been through a book called The Trellis and the Vine, yeah. and so I have to spend a lot of time on the trellis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to do that as a school administrator. So, so many people, an army of people, contend to the vine, and that's the discipleship aspect of our school. But um, Well, in mentioning, I'll say, you know, you mentioned evangelism as a part of that, and one of the things mm -hmm. that we even talked about in our last um, podcast episode was just the fact that I think sometimes we view evangelism as a finish line when really it's a starting mm, line. Absolutely. You know, there's this aspect of, of church life and life as a believer that we call disciple making. 
which includes evangelism and discipleship. And so, uh, you know, that evangelism is a part of that effort, is, is a, a necessity. Um, and so, for sure, I, mean, I think that the school complements that by everything that's being done. And, and that's certainly what we want to be. Well, as an arm of the church, big church, and also specifically as an arm of Parkview Baptist Church, it's, there's so much noise in society today to distract a young person or a young family just trying to make ends meet, then you don't have time to go to church on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Of course, we have things like podcasts, live stream sermons, and things like that. But still, mm-hmm. it becomes almost a side right. product of your life when used to church was a central part of people's lives. Sure. And so I feel like having a school gives another huge connection point to families that are going to go to school somewhere. Right. Yeah. And then to show them the love of Christ and those relationships and let them come across believers is... Uh, is a powerful thing. So I'm glad yeah. that our church is able to have a school. I wish every church had a school. I can see why they don't, and it's not in everybody's mission to do that, and that's not a bad thing. Right. But for us, it's always been the heartbeat of our congregation to do that. But we have to take advantage of it. And so um, I love the evangelistic aspect of it, and but I think the core of it for me, because our community needs it, the kingdom needs it, is to disciple kids in a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, you know, I guess for our family, this is our first experience yeah. with a Christian school. We've we've not been involved in that. And so, you know, it, it takes a little bit of, of getting used to, you know, that we're having to go over a memory verse that's a class verse. You know, you're memorizing a, a verse okay. for the week. And, um, and you know, just to have that part of, of that life incom- incorporated into it has just been a been a neat thing, something we've not been used to. And mm-hmm. um, it's, you know, different in a good way. And that, that's a hard thing because we'll talk in teams about how do we want to do discipleship in a school. The Bible is a big, a big subject. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and when you're talking about what does a student need developmentally as they grow in wisdom and, and in stature, what does a preschool stu- student need to know? You know yeah. God created you. God loves you. And then how does that progress all the way through? And you think you have a lot of time from preschool, of course, the church has a huge preschool, and then in a school, they've invested heavily in young people. But it's still, if you're not intentional about it, like, where do you, do you, do you just teach them all the Bible stories? Do you teach them deep theology? Do you teach them just facts about the Bible? Yeah. That's always a challenge to me, because you, in, in our limited amount of time, you know, 15,000 hours that we have with a student, I mean, we have to be on point to uh, to narrow down and, and redeem that time yeah. as wisely as we can. So as you go through it with your children, uh, yeah, hopefully absolutely. you can give us some pointers on what what are the things that are most Im- important. It's it's hard to whittle that down to the essentials. Sure. Well, and I think we talk about in the church realm empowering empowering and equipping parents to you know fulfill that role in their children's lives and a holistic aspect of mm-hmm. of teaching that Deuteronomy six principle. You mm-hmm. know, when you walk by the way, when you stand, when you sit that you're always communicating truth about God. Um, and so, you know, when you only get a little bit of time on Sunday and maybe a Wednesday uh-huh. or an event, um, you know, you're, you're limited. And so, you know, to know that this resource is available and certainly, you know, not everyone is able, you know, to, to take advantage mm-hmm. of that or, or going to take advantage mm-hmm. of that. Um, but it's a great opportunity, um, you know, to be able to, to impact the kingdom. It so. is. And I, when we do surveys, we survey our parents, I, I was, I was pleased to see on the last couple, you know, that I've been here through my time, that the reason they choose Parkview Baptist School is because it is a Christian school. Mm -hmm. And many of those people may not have a church home, but they know they want that in the life of their child because it's it's an avalanche um, (laughs) just coming at your children every day during the week. And even maybe even a non-Christian parent or an unchurched parent, they know that and they just know that. They need every opportunity to pour positive uh, biblical principles into their child. Sure. So hopefully we're a good steward of that, and we'll yeah. do the best we can. Well, in that realm of stewardship, so when you talk about the mission of the school and the twofold mm. you know, aspect of that, how, how do you see, so if somebody were investigating Parkview Baptist School as a potential you know, place for their children, what, what are the things throughout the day that you see that kind of translate into that mission or ways that I guess you see mm. it visible? Right. Uh, first of all, I think if you're if you're serving the community in education, you have to have a high quality school. So we believe in doing everything heartily as unto the Lord, mm-hmm. Colossians three twenty three, and then also uh, I think it's uh, 
uh, First Corinthians nine. I may get the the address wrong on the verse, yeah, but yeah. Paul says, "I'm all things to all people," so they might you know win some. And so we have a lot of activities on our school to uh, to attract students. First of all, because you're doing things in a quality manner, but then also within that framework, there are a multitude of opportunities to learn about Christ. So uh, starting the day with prayer having biblical integration in a classroom. Some subjects are easier than others, but we go through training on how to do that, no matter what the subject matter is. God right. is the creator of knowledge, and uh, I think it, learning is an act of worship. Sure. Uh, he just created us to be creators, and, and all those types of things. And, and, having, and this is the thing that you don't realize in, in a school, is when you have great staff members and dedicated faculty, dedicated coaches, they are doing little things every day that you never write down. It's just seeing an expression on a child's face. You know, I'm, I'm praying for your, your grandparents. I'm praying for your brother, praying for your sister. Having those types of connections is huge. And then we have all the normal things that you would think a Christian school would have. Chapels. I'll tell you, chapels are, I love the chapel services at our school. Once you go through that yeah. music service and worship and you have those times throughout the week, uh, I'm, I kind of have an unfair advantage over other people, I think, because if I need to pick me up on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, all I have to do is go into one of our chapel services. So they're going to hear it. Like I said, I, I'm sure they're not all paying attention every, every yeah. bit of the time, but I guarantee you with students, whether you think they're listening or not, things are getting in. Yeah. So, and then, and then everything else, mission trips, there's so many things we can, can get into spiritual emphasis, emphasis weeks. Yeah. Uh, and we just want to be sure that we saturate every time we can just little opportunities to share the light of Christ. Yeah. So you spoke, you spoke about chapels just a second mm-hmm. ago. Um, so I think that brings in the realm of, so chapel looks a little different this year. Oh, yeah, um, it does. And so I think everything's been affected by what we have experienced as a nation, as a, as a, a mm. global, you know, society in a sense. Um, so what, what are the unique challenges that COVID has presented? And then um, how, you know, is how have you guys navigated those Right. Well, we're in the people business, and uh, we deal with all the controversial subjects, people's money <laughs> with tuition and religion. I guess politics is the other one. I try not to get into that too much. I, handling the, the two biggest <laughs> controversial yeah. uh, issues people face. Oh, and I'm dealing with people's children, too, right. so they get a little bit passionate about their children. Just a little. So, uh, so that being in the people business, COVID has uh, thrown a wrench in relationships, yeah. and we have wanted to do everything we can to have all of our students on campus. Of course, we're the size of the campus we have and the rooms we have. We're able to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, praise the Lord that we have that opportunity. So we've had to change procedures, policies, processes, and then, like you were talking about whack-a-mole earlier, and then change them again. And again, we we're talking about how to take temperatures today. I mean, it's just right. every yeah. day has its own new COVID-related uh, aspect. But we have pushed through that and we've found ways to keep people together, to stay in front of our students, whether it's through Zoom meetings, just how can you have a personal touch when you don't have the person in front of you all the time? Yeah. So those little interrelational challenges have been there, but people are amazing. I mean, God created us to be creative. He's a creative God, and I feel like we're finding ways through every bit of it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think ministry is going to suffer through it. We just, you don't give up. Yeah, you keep pushing forward. Oh, for sure. What's amazed me is just you know I guess I've come in during all of this, uh, just to see the resilience of the church staff and the school staff, and um, you know I think it's a testament to um, their their ability, um, their excellence in those things. And so um, talk talk a little bit about mm. your your school staff and kind of oh that's I, this is my my favorite subject because you're not going to have a Christian school or, or a church that's going to go very far without people, the best people. And what I see a Christian school teacher go through every day of their life is incredible. And a coach, uh, we just had our uh, pickup time. We will have staff members that will have worked all day, worked that, and now they're heading to work with athletes or train athletes. And of course, all the things that we can do right yeah, now, right. <laughs> uh, or, do a robotics club or, or something like that. Their energy is amazing. And, and you know, you're not monetarily rewarded uh, as much as maybe some of the most important professions, quote unquote, that you would have in America. But 
I don't even think that matters to them. I mean, it does matter to everybody, but they're just passionate about what they do and they're passionate about their students. And I'm humbled by it every day when I, when I see what they're able, able to do. And it takes all types. You know, I, I tell our, our parents, you know, you have to have, I mean, our, our staff members, you have to have competency in at least three areas. Of course, educationally, knowing what you're doing, we're a school, sure, whether right. you're an educator or a coach, human skills, and, and your spiritual life. Yeah. And we have people that are, if you looked at it, that as a bar chart, they have strengths and weaknesses all across that continuum. And, but all together as a group, it, it all comes together for an amazing picture. I, yeah, I, can't, I can't say enough about, um, about their impact and, and obvious care, which is what some people see when they tour the school or they've been here a little bit. They just say it just feels, it feels like a place where people care about, about the students. And, and that's not just our school. That's Christian school in general. Sure. I did an accreditation visit for a school in Shreveport last week, and – and I'm telling you, it's important to know we're not alone in this. Mm-hmm. You you can listen to the news, you can look at society and think that it's just we're just a small drop in the bucket. But keep pray, you pray for other churches on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Uh, let's keep praying for our other schools because people are pulling, uh, pushing the plow, and tilling the ground and planting the seeds. It's not just us, and it it does make a difference. Um, but it starts with those dedicated teachers coming to work every day to invest in the life of a kid. Absolutely. Don, we appreciate you joining us today. A um, lot of good things. Um, and so this will definitely be helpful to our congregation uh, as well as to uh, those who have kids in the school just to hear a little bit about uh, what, who we are and, and what we're trying to do. And so thanks for joining us and, um, here on the Parkview Life podcast. And uh, we pray that this episode has been encouraging to you. Uh, you can look for more as they come out. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>